Oh my god, greetings one and all. Welcome to another devilishly erotic episode of It Crept from the 80s. And here we are with a very special guest. This is a special episode, folks. Because now, we have somebody who's usually on the other side. A fan who watches the show is now on the show. My God, tell the people who you are. Oh, you weren't going to say? No, go ahead. <laughs> I'm Tom. <laughs> this is Tom. <laughs> uh, or, or for you people on the other side and who watch on the channel or who comment, this is Laugh-O-Grams. Yeah, Laugh-O-Grams. Laugh-O-Grams in the comments. Um, and Tom is here to to uh, be grilled and... and uh, and abused and humiliated by me here on It Crept From The 80s about his his history with the time period. Uh, what What is his perspective growing up? Uh, it's, it's a little different than mine because uh, I'm 42, about to be 43. Well, going to be 43 this year. Uh, so there's a little bit of time break there. But it's interesting to hear uh, where he's coming from as far as growing up in that time period or even like being able to you know fully be aware of your that you're growing up in the 90s but still having that connection to the 80s and, and I think being a little more into the 80s stuff as opposed to the 90s stuff definitely uh, so I'm going to talk to him about that stuff but first I want to show off some pickups or some pickups. or a haul, if you will, or or a, I guess somebody was yes, I was I was gifted uh, one of this stuff. But so I'm gonna show off some stuff, and Tom's gonna show off some stuff. Tom has some more more stuff than I do. He he made out pretty good today. I did actually. It was a decent day. Um, so let me start with well this. Um. So if you guys know, or maybe you don't know, that um, He-Man is coming back this year in a big way. Masters of the Universe. Um, not only with two cartoons, because we're getting the anime-inspired uh, <clears throat> straight sequel to the original He-Man cartoons... With Kevin Smith as the showrunner. Really? I didn't know about that. That's called Masters of the Universe Revelation. Nice. And that is a direct sequel from the original show. Nice. And that's being uh, animated by the guys who did the new Castlevania on Netflix. So that's coming. But there's also a new interpretation of Masters of the Universe coming to Netflix. Which is a brand new, you know, version. Uh, new animation, all that. So that's happening. We're also getting a Masters of the Universe movie in 2021. And the original Masters line, called Masters of the Universe Origins, is coming from Mattel and going to be in stores. In stores, folks. He-Man is going to be back on the toy shelves, which is so, so very exciting. Until the scalpers get them. The scalpers are going to get them. But damn it, I'm going to do my best to get as many as I can. Um, so I bring all that up because this is sort of like the first thing where Mattel is back on st store shelves but instead I guess there may be I don't know this is sort of like a it's a, a mixing of brands but it's also I guess a test if you will of bringing the masters back onto the toy shelves and they're doing it with Listen, I'm going to call it WWF because that's what I always call it. That's what I grew up with. I don't call it WWE. I never have when they changed right. it. Yeah, it just doesn't. I get it that they the reason that they had to change, I understand that. But it's always going to be WWF for me. So this is the Masters of the Universe mashup with WWF. Um, and this was the um, Ultimate Warrior Masters of the Universe you know, mashup. And uh, they have Triple H, um, and then they have Sting, and then I think Finn Balor. But I don't like Sting and 
those guys, Triple H, all, everybody but the Ultimate Warrior, I just don't care about. Um, because my time with wrestling was the 80s. That's my that's my that's where my love lies for the WWF. Once it hits, you know, 91 and up, no thanks. Uh, and Ultimate Warrior hit the scene in 1987. Uh, he was a crazy lunatic. He was my favorite wrestler when I was a kid. And he, 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 he hit, I mean, he was nutso. And when I saw this figure for the previews coming up, I was like, holy shit, that, that is like a perfect, perfect mix of original He-Man with, with what they're doing now. So basically what they're going to be doing is, for the new Origins line, is they're going to give you that original uh, size, the original kind of build, but now they're going to have more articulation, um, which they're starting with these figures. So they're giving you that bend, they're giving you the bend there in the legs. All that good stuff is now going to be implemented into the Masters line, but you're going to get the uh, original figures. So you'll get Man at Arms, you'll get Tila, you know, Evil Lynn, all those guys, and I am so excited. But I had to have this um, in the Wave 2 uh, 80s. For me, they're going to have Macho Man at Arms, Macho Man Randy Savage, so I'm going to pick him up. I'm hoping that we get a Roddy Piper down the down the line. I ho I'm hoping these do really well for Mattel, and they keep doing them, because I'll, I'll keep grabbing the 80s guys that I loved. And that's it's sweet. That Sweet shit, awesome. right? That's awesome. Um, keeping in line with Ultimate Warrior, here is the Hasbro. This is a loose Hasbro Ultimate Warrior from 1991. He's in pr really, actually, really good shape. Um, good paint. And this was only five bucks. So I was like, yes, I'm going to get it. That was a good deal. Um, I want to get Rowdy Piper. Of course, I want to get my guys. You know, Hulk... I want to get, you know, Hacksaw Jim Duggins, <laughs> Junkyard Dog, uh, all that good stuff. Uh, so I picked him up, and I am starting with to re-get all the Thundercats that I had growing up. And this was a really good Le Tigre, <laughs> Tiger. Still works great. The paint is actually really great. There's very little you know guffs or scuffs anything I mean it's just really pretty good uh, I paid a little more than I wanted to pay for him but I justified it because he looks so damn good he does. Um, I just gotta get his weapon but other than that it's great what was his weapon? Uh, he had like a lash he had a oh lashing. that's right okay yeah, like yeah. and then it's been a minute since I saw him one of the bad guys that I did have, and this is Slythe. Still works really great. And again, fucking the, the paint is great. I mean, usually you find these guys looking pretty rough, but this guy was dope. <laughs> yeah, he's in nice shape. Good shape. I know when I saw that in the store, I thought it was like a, a like a like a reproduction. Yeah. So yeah. And then a uh, good friend, fan of the channel, fan of my films, um, he knew I wanted this. It was on my list for some time, and I finally got this thanks to Mr. Sean Pinkerton. But I got Knight Rider, the complete series on Blu-ray, finally. Grew up with Knight Rider, loved it, loved Kit, loved Michael Knight. It was a great adventure series. I can't wait to dip my balls back into this magic. It's going to be awesome. Um... Thank you, Sean. And thank you, Mill Creek, because I'm going to be doing... You guys recently sent me some gems. Uh, I'm going to be doing a whole whole review of, of, the, of all the Mill Creek stuff. Um, and this included Mill Creek. My God, thank you. So, All right. Very so that was, my, that was my pickups. How about you, Tom? You want me to do my pickups now? Yeah, do your pickups. Um, well, I'm, mine are mostly VHS tapes because I have a thing for VHS tapes. Um, and this place had a bunch of good ones, so let me see. I got Ernest Rides Again. 
This is one I have almost all the Ernest movies, but I think this is one of the less popular movies. So it's oh yeah, it's one of the fucking garbage Ernest movies. <laughs> hey. This is the movie that destroyed the theatrical Ernest movies. Really? Yep. This movie came out and it only made one million dollars at the box office. Wow, that's a shame. And they scrapped everything theatrical after that. That's so This man. in the theater, I remember, because I I saw every Ernest movie in the theater. Up to there, at the very end of that movie, there was a trailer for Ernest Goes to School. And that was going to be the next theatrical release. And then they released all the rest on VHS, right? Well, Ernest Goes to School on was VHS. Yeah. Wow, that's a bummer. Because that movie tanked, and it deserved it. It, it stinks. It stoinks. It's, it is a true <laughs> ew. It's the start of the bad Ernest movies. Although, Ernest Goes to School... It's pretty entertaining. It's pretty entertaining. Yeah. But I still hold the first four Ernest movies up as the best Ernest movies. I agree. So anyway, but continue. It, you know, I'm it, sorry. It goes with my other ones. It goes in the collection. Yeah, you so. know, this completists. Yeah, it's all. Yeah, exactly. You so. gotta have all your Ernest. And yeah, you know, I love me some Ernest. So, and then I picked up a couple uh, Ninja Turtle VHS tapes. I think I'm gonna actually have this one, but I didn't want to pass it up just in case. And I got this uh, Cowabunga Shredhead and. <laughs> Hot rotting teenagers. Mm. So sultry. It's a couple good ones, and then I got turtles are getting laid. What? <laughs> turtles are getting laid in those episodes. Uh, I and then I got Classic. Teen Wolf. Yeah. Classic. Which I surprisingly don't own with my two thousand plus VHS tapes collection that I have. Uh, Michelle's gonna be happy about that one, and then I got Chris's favorite uh, Friday the Thirteenth movie. <laughs> But again, this is again this is one that has to go in the collection. So sure, you know, <laughs> whatever you. Say. I want to complete it. That's right. <laughs> and then this one, I was. This really was excited. the find of the day. Yeah, this, this was definitely great... was uh, Dino Riders, and uh, I checked and the tape is good and everything. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've I've never even seen a Dino Riders VHS tape. I didn't even know they existed. Yeah. Well, so. the cartoon is really just a limited cartoon. Yeah. It's a limited series, and it kind of was, kind of was only put out on VHS and that's it, you know? The toys were awesome. Yeah, the toys are hard one to of, find. One of Casey's uh, favorite toy lines. I know. I actually texted him. I texted him a picture of this mm -hmm. and he texted me back, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I was excited about that one. And then this one, I actually own this movie already. It's Howard the Duck, but it, it was in the blockbuster, <laughs> uh, you know, Howard the Duck. So I was, I don't know, I might... Uh, I too have Howard the Duck on VHS, DVD, and Blu-ray. <laughs> Yeah, it's just one of those. It's to I me, grew it's, up with it, man. It's one of those I good bad movies, you know. Oh like, yeah, it's a it's a bad movie, but it's it's a feel good bad movie. I don't think it's a good movie. <laughs> I mean, I enjoy, I love watching it, but like, you know, critically, I get it. Yeah, and box office wise and all that. Um, and then I did pick up a Mad Ball. One of the this is a modern Mad Ball, but it's one. You of mean the, modern? Modern. I'm sorry, I That's forgot. Right. I forgot the lingo. <laughs> The Madrin <laughs> Mad Ball of the Predator. This is one of the horror Mad Balls or whatever. Um, and then I got this cool. This is from the '80s. Uh, Slimer. This is a McDonald's toy that you would get in your Happy Meal. And it still works. It's in good shape. And I also paid a little, probably more than it was worth. But, yes, definitely. You know, the guy made a special trip and let us, you know, rummage around through his stuff. So I was like, I'm gonna spend a few extra bucks. So. I'll go home and put that in the Ghostbusters stuff. So, And that's all my pickups. Mostly yeah. VHS tapes. Here we go. Alright, so let's get into the thick of it. Lots. Uh, so, really, this is just going to be us talking to Tom about uh, all this crazy nostalgia. So. I consider myself... I tell people that I'm a nostalgia junkie. Okay. You know, like, you need... You know, junkies need to get their fix. <laughs> that's right. I need that... <laughs> That feeling you get when you find, you know, when you find a toy that you haven't seen in 20 years and you get that little rush of, like, that nostalgia emotion. I... That's, that's like a, I get a, that's like my adrenaline rush. That's my, that's my drug. I feel like uh, I am definitely a nostalgia junkie. For sure. Yeah, when I walked in this room, I felt like I was in an OD. It was just <laughs> like, whoa! That's right. So, um, where did it start for you, Tom? What, uh, so you are, yeah... You're a little bit younger. A few years. Well, um, you're a Star Wars kid. I'm a, I'm a Jedi kid. So, 77, 83. Okay, so you were born in 83. Yes. I was born in 77. 
Um, so you, okay. So I guess what would be your, when was your, uh, what do you really, truly, cause there's some kids, I mean, there's some people in general in life who somehow, and I don't know how they do it, but they can do it. They can remember sort of like their first memory is like, you know what? I remember back when I was three years old. You yeah. Know? Um, I think mine goes to... Man, I was three in 1980. I think my... F oh, my first memory is a Star Wars memory, and I was four years old. Four years old. Four, that's, that's not bad. So enough. when do you think yours... When do you really remember... Being a kid in the 1980s, like what was what's your, um, your? I want to say probably spring or summer of '85. I can remember back that far, because I remember um, my best friend Sherry Smith lived down the street, and her birthday was in January. My birthday was in August, and I remember uh, sitting in her living room. We were watching cartoons. I don't remember exactly what it was, but um, and I was saying how I was excited that I was going to be turning three. And she's like, I already turned three. And I was like, so, like, I'm going to turn three and then we'll be the same age. And she's like, yeah, but I'm still older than you because I turned three, like, months ago. <laughs> and, you know, and then we had a little fight. And I used to always pull out her hair. Oof. So that I probably ended up pulling out her hair, so. You brute. I know. Her mom would actually send her home or send her over in, like, this big hat with her hair tucked up in there. Because <laughs> we would get in these fist fights and I'd rip her hair out every single time. Oh, you savage. Yeah, I was a brute. Oh, I was a terrible goodness. human being. But yeah, um, that's the earliest I can remember. And then I have, you know, I remember like my sister was born in 86. I remember that. So I have quite a few memories from back in the 80s. What, um, what are your fondest memories growing up in the 80s? Like what, I think you're probably going to say what we all say is the, you know, the, the entertainment, the toys, the pop culture. I would, I would think that that's probably yeah, <laughs> where um, your mind is coming from. That's, yeah, that's, those are definitely the first things that come to mind is, uh, cartoons, toys, breakfast cereal, mm. um, and, uh, I would go, and I would say, like, the innocence of the 80s, you know, like, I could go outside and play, and my mom would be in the house, like, cleaning the house, and I'd be, you know, three, four, five years old, and I could go down to my friend Sherry's house, and we could walk around the neighborhood a little bit, you know, we didn't have, like, free roam in the neighborhood, but... Um, and my parents didn't really worry so much that, you know, we were going to disappear somewhere, you know, like... Most parents didn't. Most parents didn't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, it was They gave a like, shit, but it was like... It was, you know, it was more of this attitude like, you know, wake up, eat cereal, watch the little cartoons, and then get out. Yeah, go play. You know, yeah. Go get dirty. You know, go get sweaty. Did she... Did your parents ever have like a, okay, this is where you have to come back? You know, like, we'll cut, because, like, my family in our neighborhood, you always, there was always a parent yelling out the door throughout the neighborhood, like, yeah. okay, you know, it's, it's blah, 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 you know, come eat, oh, so we, I went, in, I would go in to eat at five o'clock, that was dinner, and then I would go back out to play after dinner, and then they wanted me back in by 9 p.m., you know, this was when I was a kid, Yeah. and the, and all the parents would, you'd always you know like come back yeah you'd you hear know? it oh yeah or or when the light comes on when the street light comes on get back to the house you know yeah um ours was sort of because all right so my best friend sherry lived down the street and then our other friend robbie lived behind her like on the next street over so we would either hop the fence into his yard and play with him there he'd hop the fence and come with us and so my mom was best friends with her mom okay and my mom also went to high school with robbie's mom okay. so they all kind of knew each other so like they would know like okay the kids are at rob's the kids are at sherry's the kids are at tom's and so like the moms would just call and be like you know so it'd be like hey tom your mom says it's time to come home <laughs> okay. for dinner yeah. or uh and then you know like the final thing for the night especially in the summertime would be like the softy truck i don't know if you guys had softy mr we, softy we you know in wellsville we didn't really have an ice cream truck I see, we had Mr. Softy, and he, I don't know, remember the time that it came down, but it was, like, religiously at the same time every night, and we would, you know, sometimes we would sit out and wait 
and get Mr. Softy. Yeah. But regardless, like once the Softy truck went down the street, it was that time, was it. it was time, time to go. Come. And usually it was like right around dusk. It was just when it was starting to get dark. So, yeah. you know, but yeah, the, the Softy truck was the unofficial. Um, and we actually had this guy, Jim, who used to be our softy man. And every once in a while, if we sat like on the curb, like when he went by, if he, I don't know if he's having a slow day or a good day or a bad day or whatever, every once in a while he'd slip us an ice cream. It's cool. And we'd come home with the ice cream different on our hands and, you know, mom would be like, where the hell did you get that from? <laughs> I know you don't have any money. So. Jim gave it to us. Yeah. Mom. <laughs> I mean, Jim! Now, nowadays that would be kind of considered creepy, right? Yes. A man in yes. a truck hit, walked, yeah. drove down the street and gave us ice cream. I mean, everything <laughs> Everything we did back then would be considered bad today. Definitely. You know? For sure. Which is, I think, also a, a lot of why people our age or people who grew up in that time always go to, like, the innocence. You know? It was Definitely. a simpler, innocent time. Uh, and maybe, you know, uh, let's let's be realistic. As adults uh, now, you, could pr- you can say, well... No, there was some bad shit happening back then. There, there was. definitely was. You but hear about it, just, it on the news. It was just a... It's hard to describe unless you weren't living it, you yeah. know? Unless you weren't there. It it's, felt different. It very... It so felt you different. You know, we maybe we could have been kidnapped. Who knows? But it didn't feel like it. Yeah. Nowadays, like, if my daughter goes next door to get her friend, I watch out the window the whole way. Yeah. You know? And... If she doesn't come back in like a minute or two, I go out there and find out where she went. Yeah, I just tell River, because he's got his phone, I tell River, be smart, you know, because he'll go around the neighborhood sometimes. And I'm like, get crazy, go wild, scream, you know, like if any, if you are, you feel like in danger, yeah. you book it and scream while you're doing it, you know, he knows. Yeah, you know, definitely. Like, just make a scene so anybody <laughs> and everyone can hear it, you know, like, just, yeah, you know. That's good advice, though. Yeah, go nuts, you know? And luckily, this neighborhood, there's so many houses and so many people around that it, it's, it's, we're also on a, on a neighborhood that has a neighborhood watch, so it's part of that whole thing. Nice. So, you know, I feel a little better, you Yeah, know? I think when we were kids, it was sort of a neighborhood watch, but not officially. Yeah, you know, well, like, again, if, you just mentioned the yeah, parents. Yeah, the parents would kind of look out for the other kids when they were... You know, and of course, if we got in trouble, the parents would be calling my parents. So yeah. it wasn't always, didn't always work out for the best. But I definitely many a times um, did something I shouldn't have and came home. And my mom miraculously knew about it. And I was already in trouble when I walked through the door. Yeah. And at the time I had, I was like, how did she know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, good times. Uh, so, um... What do you think uh, your favorite pop culture is from from back then? Like, do you have a favorite cartoon? Do you have a favorite oh, absolutely. Uh, 80s movie? Do you have a favorite toy? My favorite movie, cartoon, toy line, and cereal was the Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Hands down that. Um, nothing gets that rush of adrenaline going for me that rush of nostalgia like ghostbusters so um do you remember like when you first saw the movie because the movie came out in 84 yeah uh um Uh, i don't remember like the first time i saw it but i remember um i'm like 99 percent sure that i watched the cartoon first yeah that was 1986 yeah and i think uh i think i was like in i got into the cartoon and at some point when I got a little bit older, like maybe like five or six, my parents were like, hey, you know, there's a movie. And it was like, what? A movie? Like, let's watch it, you know? Yeah. And um, I'm pretty sure that's how it went down. Because I definitely remember being like hardcore into the cartoon with very little memory of the movie at that point. So my guess is that I was really into the cartoon and then the movie came after. Mm-hmm. So... For me, I mean, obviously it came out first, but... Yeah, yeah. I saw the movie first and then everything. But I also am a Ghostbuster junkie. Yeah, same. Um, So, but but outside of that, what were your other sort of Uh, go-tos? Go-tos. Thundercats was really big for me. Um, Ninja Turtles, like, you know, when I was like five, six, seven. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, but when I was real little, it definitely was Thundercats and Ghostbusters were like right 
like this. Okay. And then obviously Ghostbusters became huge. And even though I, I have a special place in my heart for Thundercats, you know, it just it just wasn't as big as Ghostbusters. So I think eventually, you know, and then Ghostbusters went, you know, into the 90s. And my my uh, childhood sort of straddled the 80s and 90s. I, I have like four or five good years in the 80s, four or five good years in the 90s kind of border. So in Ghostbusters followed me into the 90s. Whereas. And is Turtles as well? Definitely. I mean, do you yeah. hold that up kind of? Yeah, I mean, would you say Turtles, Ghostbusters, and Thundercats were sort of like your absolutely your bread and butter? <laughs> it would probably yeah, it'd probably be Ghostbusters, Ninja Turtles, Thundercats, um, and only Thundercats is only third because it it wasn't like it didn't last as long, like yeah. the phenomena didn't carry on as long, mm-hmm. whereas like Ninja Turtles just carried on forever and <laughs> it just so keeps did, going. Yeah, and so did Ghostbusters. So um, Kenner made sure of that. Yeah, they did. <laughs> Jesus. They definitely did. Six and I had many, lines. many, many of those toys. Wow. So. Uh, I capped off for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After those first couple lines, I was just like, okay, I, this, what is going on here? Yeah. But see, because I still was younger into the early 90s, um, I, I watched all the way up until, you know, the Slimer and the real Ghostbusters. Yeah, well, so did I. And then even when, like, uh, Extreme Ghostbusters came out. Oh, I, nope, I was yeah. definitely like, no way. A lot of people, yeah. The same are, Ghostbusters. Like that. But at that point in my life, I was like, anything that says Ghostbusters, anything with a no-ghost logo. Um, I didn't really get into Extreme Ghostbusters like I did real Ghostbusters. Yeah. But I definitely, when it came out, I'm like, all right, let's go, more Ghostbusters, let's do it, you know? like. Um, but, yeah, it wasn't as good by far. I still appreciate its place in history, but, you know, in the in the Ghostbusters universe. Um, so, when do you think... Um, <clears throat> so, when do you think, as an adult, you started to have those... That, uh, that feeling again? Where you were like, you know what, like the wanting, the nostalgia. Yeah, just just having um, that moment of like, why can't I sort of have this again? Yeah, you know? and deciding, you know what, I'm I'm gonna dip some dip some toes in it, and I'm gonna see how this is, see how this feels, see if I can bring it back into my life and all that stuff. So. Um, I don't know. That's kind of hard because I I never felt like, you know, I did get to that point in my life where you know I was into girls. I wanted to buy a car, all that stuff, but I never fully, like, pushed the Ghostbusters out of my life, you know, it always was like, any, you know, even when I was in high school, when I was in my early 20s, I still had that, like, when I saw the Ghostbusters, I was like, oh, we gotta watch it, or if I saw something with the Ghostbusters logo on, I was like, oh my god, Ghostbusters, um, so I don't think I ever, like, fully pushed it out, it was never fully gone, um, but when I got to be, like, I want to say right around 30, I... I actually, I want to say it was Casey actually sent me something that was from like a vintage toy group and I clicked on it and I'm like, oh, this is cool. But then I start, you know, like sometimes you click on a photo on Facebook and you can scroll through the other photos yeah. and I started, I was like, ooh, 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 I remember all these. And then, um, I almost, I, I kind of got that rush of that first like major rush of nostalgia and then I'm like, you know, you know, I'm going to buy it. Yeah. You know, I finally saw something, I'm like, I'm going to buy it. So I, I started buying a couple things here and there. And then and then from then, it was kind of like the floodgates opened. You know, it was just like, I got to get more nostalgia. I got to get more nostalgia. Um, and then Casey also turned me on to your show. And then you actually mentioned in a, in a previous episode that you're like, oh, I think our show sort of is like, you know, fueling his. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. definitely, like for sure. Um Michelle actually, <laughs> she's like, she the first few episodes I watched, she would watch with me, uh, and I think she sensed that like, it was getting me all juiced up, you know. <laughs> oh no! You know. And uh, I think if she, I don't know, I don't know if she really, like, verbalized it, but I think she sensed like, oh, this is going in a bad direction for me, <laughs> you know, and the toys start piling up everywhere and stuff like that. So, yeah. but it probably, you know, um, the nostalgia. Of like wanting to relive it yeah. and reacquire uh, 
probably will like, in the last like five or six years. So, but yeah, you definitely, you guys definitely juiced me up. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, so, well, this is clearly a, a you know, a positive thing. Oh, yeah, but definitely. there's a but no what I'm saying is there's a lot of people out there who <clears throat> who like nostalgia but they they only want it in in doses because they think that they think that like relying and and trying to recapture or stay so close to the past is like a bad thing. And for me, it's not. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with it. Yeah, that's so that's why I said, eh, I, I probably know this answer. So Yeah, but. I know, and you hear these people, like, uh, they talk about new movies coming out, like, oh, they're just they're just playing on the nostalgia, and I'm like, yeah, so? Exactly. What's that's, wrong with that? That's, I'm like, when I get when yeah. I get that nostalgia feeling, it's like it's like a rush. It's like a, you know, like a tingle down your spine, you know, like, ooh, like, nostalgia, I remember that. You know, like, why would you, what's wrong with that? Yeah. yeah. I love it now. That's how I feel, you know? Like... If it makes you feel good, man, if, right. if it puts a smile on your face, what? Who cares? I totally you know? agree, man. Yeah, I don't get it. Those are those are very cynical, cynical individuals who who have grown up <laughs> too much. <laughs> you know, yet we have to grow up. I get that to a certain extent, unfortunately. <laughs> you know, you grow up physically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you don't have to grow up. You know, you can still keep that kid. Yeah. Inside you. Know? I, I've never let it go. Maybe that's why I've lost some relationships, and I'm not t- just talking, you know, romantic relationships, but like friendships. Cer- certainly, I believe that is true. Um, because a lot of people, when I was, you know, going into my teens and adulthood, I lost so many people because I never changed. <laughs> I was always the same Chris, and I think a lot of these people were changing. They were growing, they were changing, and those things were just not a part of who they were anymore, which yeah. meant, well, it's time to let Chris go as well. Because yeah, he's, he's part like, of that. He's like an old toy. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, that, it's like when you're, when you're 17, you don't want to hang out with your little sister. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that. Like, well, Chris is still a little kid, so we're not going to hang out with him anymore. Which is funny because, like... <laughs> You know, I had so many friends that were so young. Uh, I had some that were my age, um, but the majority of all my good, good friends growing up were all younger than me. And I just found it to be more on par with where I was. That makes sense, though. That makes sense. So I was 17, and I had friends that were 13. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just, I just, I just never... I've and then they outmatured you at some point, right? They did. <laughs> they did, unfortunately. Yeah. Yes. That's... You know, all those guys did. Uh, until I kind of found some new ones. But even even the, the who I call the gang or the, the extended family, my big group of friends now, um, I'm still probably the most childish and childlike out of all of them. I can see that. Uh, and again, I've got very dear, dear friends who are, you know, fucking 11, 12 years younger than me that are in the group. Uh, and even they are a little more mature than I <laughs> I think they appreciate, but they haven't gone. They, they love me for who I am. And they, I think when we're all together, it kind of brings that a- out a little bit more. We can all act a little goofier. Because we're all goofballs, but I think my... My tendency for the childlike stuff, the the nostalgia stuff, is is far more uh, present than than theirs may be. You know. Yeah, I could. Whereas see that. I can, I have a lot of people in the group who would just be like, "Oh my god, I remember this. That's so cool," and I'd be like, "Oh, you you gonna get some of that? No, <laughs> you know." I'm like, "What? Uh, no, because it's not. It's just not. They may appreciate it, but it's just not something they care about, which is fine." Um, was there those moments was there ever a moment like that to you where like I know here's another example my, like my wife when she 
sort of got to an age and went to college and knew what she was going to do with her life, she felt like she had to kind of hide things because that wasn't what everyone else was doing in the world. Like, so she pushed a lot of her love for video games and, and things of that nature, science fiction aside, because, oh, no one's going to like this. No one's going to talk to me about this stuff. Like, so she felt like she had to be an adult then. She felt like she had to grow up finally. Yeah. And then she met me. <laughs> and she was like, wait a second. And I was like, no, man, be who you are. And she was like, you know what? You're right. And she wrote this long, like, really passionate thing about just that stuff. Like, why did I do this? Why did I give up so much of that just because I thought I had to be this, you know? Yeah. And now she's just like, I, don't f- I'm, I am who I am and I love what I love and, you know... Was there ever that moment where you were like, ah, oh, man, you know, I have to, I have to hang these up because I have to be an adult, you know? Um, yeah, I think, um, maybe when my daughters are born, you know, well, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel say... like when that happens, <laughs> at well, least no. for me, when my kid was born, I was like, yeah. Like, because this was another human being that I could basically t- doom, like program with all with your all stuff. nerd, with all eighties, with all like. I mean, that kid River grew up with everything I was growing up with in yeah, the eighties because that, I just pushed it all onto him. That's actually kind of how it's worked out with my daughters. They're they're into like Ghostbusters and and Ninja Turtles and all that. I don't know. I I can't really think that I ever had a moment like that. I think maybe. Um, if I did, maybe in high school when, you know, I thought, like, I was on the football team and, you know, I, I felt like maybe I had to be cool for the girls and that sort of thing. I wanted to buy a car so I could look cool to my friends and all that. Um, but I definitely did, like, somewhere around high school, I got to this point where all the stuff sort of went in the garage, went in the attic. And then we, uh, for a period of my life, we kind of moved a couple times within a short period of time and then when it was you know you're going through boxing you're like yeah we don't need that anymore um and then i but you know i don't know i i just never felt like i had to hide my love for anything you know i definitely felt like okay it's time to grow up a little bit you you know you want a car and you want to have a girlfriend and uh you want to have your own place but even like when i got to the point where i wanted to have my own place i remember thinking like I'm going to put this shit everywhere. Like, I'm going to have all my toys out. And, like, you know, I want to have shelves with all my toys. So, um, I I don't know. I don't really know how to answer that, to be honest. Because I never, like I said, I never fully pushed the kid out of me. Yeah. But I definitely had a period in my life where I felt like uh, I wanted, you know, I wanted to have a car and I wanted to have a girlfriend and all that, you know. So, and then when I started having girlfriends, I wanted to be, like, all about my girlfriend Mm -hmm. you know like we were talking about earlier you know i i felt like i had to be like this super romantic guy or i had to make all these you know romantic gestures and i had to be like the perfect boyfriend all the time you could do all that and still be you yes but you know that's how i did it (laughs) i mean that's definitely the way to do it it was basically you like me how i am or you don't like me and that's that's where i'm at right now with michelle she it's kind of like she Take is, it or leave it. Yeah, she is. Well, she is who she is with her animals, and uh, at some point in our relationship, I know there's a lot of frustration on her end with, you know, like I said, toys start piling up here and there. You're like, there's an extra box on my desk that you know, where'd that box come from? You know, <laughs> but uh, I think she's sort of embraced who I am. You know, I like, got oh, Tom is what it is, who he is, and he's he's always gonna love toys, and he's always gonna have VHS tapes and he's always gonna love kitty movies and all that stuff yeah that's good so. that's good keep it that way oh I will as long as she doesn't throw me out of the house ah uh, that would be terrible and I come home with those eight VHS tapes and she <laughs> that's it it's over you've pushed me too far I already have like these gi- you know these giant Walmart boxes pile next to my desk there's four or five of them they're just filled with vhs tapes and that's in addition to my you know my shelving unit that i have that's filled with vhs tapes so that's my that's my weakness right there 
VHS. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just something about what we were talking about a minute ago about how you, um, sometimes the feel of the VHS tape, you know, like, uh, for instance, for me, um, to watch the Ninja Turtles movie, the 1990 Ninja Turtles movie on DVD, sometimes if I'm popping in the DVD, I'll actually go on YouTube and watch that, uh, that Pizza Hut commercial, mm-hmm. you know, the, the baseball kid that mm-hmm. was on the VHS tape, you know, cause I watched that and I'm like, okay, I'm ready for Ninja Turtles, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there's something about VHS tapes, man. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's what we grew up with. It's what we had. Um, <clears throat> I mean, for me, VHS is, is for the most part, only a aesthetic thing now. You know, yeah. for me. Like, well, you can get anything that's on a VHS tape. You can get on a blue Yeah, there's a lot of stuff, though, that I have um, that you can't get on DVD or Blu-ray. So that's why I have that particular D- uh, VHS still. But for the most part, I mean, I have all of these movies, you know, already. Um, but this is just a... I'm, not, I'm never going to have any more than this. You know what I mean? Like, for me, there's no reason to. Um, other than the aesthetic of it and just having that sort of, ah, remember, you know, remember when, but say the invisible kid <laughs> on VHS that is not on DVD in really? America and then it's in the nowhere on Blu-ray. So I'm keeping that invisible kid and I will watch it in my VCR from time to time <laughs> because I love that stupid movie. But so that's the stuff that I would actually like like, I'm never getting rid of this because we're probably never going to get, you know, anything better than this Yeah. Uh, for the Invisible Kid. Those things, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to hang on to that, you know? Um, but other than that, I mean, I have a lot of this stuff already on multiple <laughs> formats, even... Yeah, and I was going to say, I can uh, see a lot of that laser stuff. Laserdisc. Is... <laughs> I have some. I don't think I've ever seen the Invisible Kid. <laughs> it's stupid fun it's 1988 it's so dumb was so it like dumb. a tv movie no no it, well it, it went direct to vhs oh, okay you know um but i just love it uh, it's so dumb um but yeah unfortunately no dvd that's wild yeah, yeah. there's money to be made people <laughs> release it well children of the night there that's a vampire movie that 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 has no other release other than vhs and that was straight to vhs so that's the stuff i i like you know? That's um, cool. But yeah. So, yeah, man. So here you are. Yeah. In, in your mid-30s, still holding on to that that magic. Doing my best. Yeah, that's right. I love it. Anything else you want to say, Tom? No. About the time? About anything? About anything else that you uh, love? You know? Um, no, I can't really. No? I, th- I thought you were going to have more questions for me. Uh, I mean, that was, that was, you know, that was pretty good. Those was some good questions. All right, what was your, oh, you already you already answered. Your favorite cereal was Ghostbusters cereal. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, speaking of cereal, I had, like, I don't know if I told you this earlier, but uh, recently I've become sort of focused on cereal boxes. That's been sort of my, like, recent uh, collecting thing, you know. To sell or to own? Like, to own a little them. both? Yeah. How does she feel about that? Uh, definitely not a fan. <laughs> I think she's more of a fan of the VHS tapes. Yeah. <laughs> Cause, well, because, uh, like, you know, with the VHS, you can still watch those things. Yeah, the, the cereal box cereal is boxes. completely, utterly useless. Like, <laughs> But I get it, man, because, like, listen, I've, you know... There are some cereal boxes that I want. There's some cereal boxes that I have. And I'm a weirdo. I like that shit. You know? Yeah, oh, see, the see, Ego yeah. box that looks like it's from 1985. I have to have it. But it's one of those things that this, that shot of nostalgia. Yeah, you know? that's because, why I do it. Uh, the like, Burger King like I hold the I hold the cereal box and I, and I can sort of remember sitting at the table on Saturday morning. Yeah, man. Pouring from that box... You know, the the you know Nintendo Power cereal. Or can whatever. you ever or, taste it? Because for me, I can taste it. I can taste. Like, w- there's one cereal that I can taste when I remember it, and that's the 1989 Batman cereal. Yeah. From I think it was from Ralston. Ralston. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> it was it almost it almost had a Captain Crunchy taste to it. Uh-huh. But in a unique way, a way that was totally its own. Actually, all those Ralstons had a very unique taste. Um, yeah, I don't uh, know if they just, when they were making it, they just threw in an extra Gremlins teaspoon of something. was a or... Ralston. Uh, the Bill and Ted's cereal They actually have Ralston. a cereal box of the Bill and Ted's cereal um, box. I always thought the weird, uh, the, teeny, the, mute, the Ninja Turtles Ralston was weird, man. It had weird. Like a weird tinge to it, right? It was weird. The... The, and it, it was marshmallows. It was like right? checks. Yeah, it was like checks, but with marshmallows. Yeah. But the checks didn't taste like checks. Yeah. You know, it was a, a weird. It was like they taste. were in the shape of t- checks. Everything. But not the taste. Ralston of. did was a little bit different, yes. but I still enjoyed it. Um, it's a, it's almost like when you go to the store and there's like the Fruit Loops, and then there's like the tops brand <laughs> yeah the fruit the generic circles yeah, or yeah. something like it's that it's always a little bit off yeah it's just it looks the same and it's almost the same Ralston had a not very unique quite... recipe i think for all their stuff because it was very different from all the other cereals yeah but i definitely uh, um that batman cereal i love that batman cereal that yeah. was like my favorite cereal oh yeah man like taste wise because all it was was like little bats it wasn't anything like yeah. really fancy about it but i actually um when I got to when I was in high school and like eBay started to become a thing, um, I looked up and found a guy selling a box unopened. So I was you know sixteen seventeen. I messaged him I'm like, hey, is this edible? And he's like, bro, I would not eat it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which you know in hindsight, thinking back now, I'm like, yeah, that that was a stupid question. But yeah. I thought maybe you can't. You, you can't. Oh, <laughs> there was a guy that drank a. 26 year old bottle of well, he's uh, Crystal idiot. Pepsi <laughs> he does it for you know views for clicks like, you know what they brought back Crystal Pepsi though and so it, it kind of, didn't it didn't taste it wasn't the same exactly like the Crystal Pepsi that I remember no, but I still enjoyed it I yeah. still enjoyed it and I did buy it oh yeah I bought tons and tons of bottles of that um, stuff same with Ecto but it definitely wasn't exactly the same Ecto Cooler I felt like tasted the same no I'm just saying I bought it when it came back and it was Ecto Cooler. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if you've heard me talk about it, but you can still get Ecto Cooler. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's not juicy called juice. Ecto Cooler. Yeah, it's yeah. juicy juice. Orange tangerine, it's the same fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, I know there's people out there that, that will, like, put food coloring in it. To I do it. it. Do I you? did it. Yeah, because uh, when I had, when I turned 40 a few years ago, uh, I, at my, because they threw me a big 80s party. Nice. Uh, so... Um, they they printed out ecto cooler uh, labels, and they filled little water jugs. They poured out the water. I think I remember. I think Casey sent me a picture of and that. And filled it with ecto cooler, but tinged it green. Uh, <laughs> well, filled it with juicy juice, tinged it green, and then put the labels around the. That's the thing. awesome. So we had ecto cooler, and it really is. I mean, it's ecto cooler. Yeah, it tastes the same. Um, that's awesome, though. But yeah, so I'm a yeah, I am definitely a, a a nut for the packaging of of when we were growing up. So I I yeah, I can sympathize with. And the, cereal was like, it was you know Saturday morning was. Cartoons cereal, yeah, you know, man. you poured your bowl of cereal, you sat in front of the TV. Sometimes you went back and grabbed a second bowl of cereal. Yeah. You know. Um, but yeah, so that's that's kind of all like one package thing for me. Yep. Yeah, I can remember so many. Like, I can still remember the taste of Smurf Berry Crunch. Um, and I can, and ne- without fail, without fail, when I buy Fruity Pebbles today, and it's not often, it's usually only for the Saturday morning sleepovers. But when I taste Fruity Pebbles, when that is <laughs> in my mouth, I instantly go back to the 80s and I feel like a kid. It, it just like, all of the senses, everything, it's like, oh my yeah, that's God. That's one of the cereals that made it. And, I just, the, and it's, it's, it's one of the cereals that right? made it and they didn't change yeah, it. Yeah, I was going to say, it tastes exactly the <laughs> same as I remember. It always tasting. That's one of the, now tricks changed and went back. Tricks changed, people complained, and they went back. And but when they, I tasted, it took them a while though. It did. But, and when I tasted when they went back, I was like, now this is tricks. Like yes. this is tricks. Actually, you you guys are the one that told me. I was watching your show one time and you talked about it, and I'm like, 
I'm going to check at Target. And sure enough, next time I was there, it was like, it was like a little starburst on the box. This is like original flavor. And I was like, yeah. hell yeah, dude, it's back. <laughs> and then, of course, I went home and tasted it. And I was just like, yes. Same like you. Like, yes, this is tricks. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, like Cocoa Puffs. No. They haven't the gone back to the original recipe. It, it's still this weird, like, blah, it's just doesn't taste the same it doesn't even really taste chocolatey to me i don't even know what it is i don't know it's, it's a sad state of affairs but again you know they're probably not kids of today yeah, <laughs> are gonna be, you know they don't care it's sugar and you know no they're not making them for the 40 year olds who are like i want my cereal for when i was but i mean even old. then we're the ones yeah. buying it so of course right the 12 year olds are buying it yeah they might be eating it but we're buying it we are buying it so but that is sad yeah. But yeah, I mean, other than that, all the cereals are either gone or it's it's changed. It's interesting to see what stayed, what yeah. has lasted, and the ones that were just kind of like pushed aside. I agree. Very odd. Very I know, odd. sometimes you go down and you, you know, there's like, they still have sugar puffs, right? And, and pops. They have, you mean sugar crisp? What you, sugar crisp? Crisp, super golden no, crisp? Golden, I'm sorry, golden. Super golden crisp. Yeah, they yeah, changed because... They, they still have that. They yes. took the focus off the sugar, and now it's golden crisp. Uh, there's still pops, yeah. There's still honeycombs. Um, yeah, but it's odd that some of the stuff that we were like loved, yeah. we're just like, you know what? We're gonna we're done with this. Like aside from the, aside. obviously the character ones that make sense because, you know, the 1989 Batman series wouldn't make sense anymore. Right <laughs> well, yeah. I mean. Batman's still relevant. Like, the still movie like theme Batman ones, series. I get. I understand. Yeah, that. but like my like my favorite one as a kid was, I don't know if you remember this one, Ice Cream Cone cereal. Yep, I remember Ice Cream Cones. I remember S'mores. S'mores. What's great about S'mores, though, there's two S'mores on the market now. One of them is a General Mills S'more, I believe. That <clears throat> is fine. But the S'mores that tastes like the S'mores from my childhood... Um, oh, I I can't remember the company name, but I I just had the box. It's Would they different. still sell it now? It is selling now. But the box looks different is what you're saying. Yeah, it's a totally different name, and I think it's probably a different company selling it. But it just happens to taste but it the is, same. But it is literally the same thing as the s'mores from when I was growing up. And that's what I get. You usually can find it at Target and Walmart. I'll have to look for that, because I remember the s'mores. It's basically... Golden Grams uh, with chocolate puffs and marshmallows. Wait. Those are the ones that taste like the original s'mores. Uh, oh, man. I think I know the ones you're talking about. But then there's a s'more one with a big blue box that I think is General Mills. That's different. Yeah. Really interesting stuff, hmm, Zach? <laughs> <laughs> you're like, when are you going to shut up? Are we I, done yet? I find it interesting anyways. Yeah, I do. <laughs> And you, you nostalgia junkies like us find it interesting. And, and that's why they'll you know keep what we're watching talking it. about, too. That's right. They're like, yes, the s'mores. That's right. Uh, well, I think that's it for tonight, Tom. Sounds good. I think we're going to stop. That was a good the, 80s geek session. I think we're going to stop the train until we go down into the home theater and watch some more 80s stuff. Let's do it. I'm down for that. So thanks, everyone, for watching this exciting and captivatingly erotic, sensual episode of A Crep from the 80s. Please, if you enjoy the videos, if you enjoy everything that you've seen, please give us a subscribe. Hit the like, hit that bell so you know when you got the new episodes coming. Tell your friends who love the 80s. And maybe maybe you grew up in the 90s, but, you're, but you loved the 80s. You love everything about the 80s. Maybe you're a, 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 a you know, 2000s kid. But you love the what you've seen of the '80s, and you love all that stuff. So, t t tell everyone, you know, because <laughs> you might just put a smile on your face. You might have some some fun watching this channel. So, thanks again, and and, and we'll see you in the past. <laughs> you gonna eat that pickle? <laughs>